All right, boys and girls, let's talk about Long Live Evil. I got lucky and got to read this one a little bit ahead of time. If you haven't watched it yet, swing by and check out the interview I did with Sarah Reese Brennan. Hold, held off on putting this review up until after I talked to her, so nobody thinks I'm just saying nice things in, a, in an attempt to get her on the podcast. She's already been here. So what is this one about? This one is about a young girl named Ray. I say young girl. She's, I think she's around 20. But let's face it, at this age, you're all young. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, she's been diagnosed with cancer. And Ray has got very few people in her life now. Her sister is her absolute rock. She lost her boyfriend to her best friend once she got sick. She's lost her dad to his new family. She's basically lost her mom to her job as uh, her mom is trying to, you know, pay for all of the treatment. And, you know, possibly it's also hard to uh, watch your child wasting away. I get that. Uh, it's not always right, but, you know, I, I, get the, I get the sentiment. So her sister is still her best friend. They have a favorite story that her sister is constantly reading to her from. It's an entire series. And uh, Sis is the good girl. She likes the heroine. She likes the hero. Ray, Ray finds the flawed characters a little more interesting. So as it happens, because this happens to all of us at some point in our life, a mysterious figure walks into Ray's life. Ray is at the end of her rope and the end of her timeline. She literally can talk about her life in weeks, if not days at this point. And this figure gives her the option to actually walk into her favorite story and perform a quest in an effort to save herself. Now, I don't know about you, but if that happened to me, I'm thinking, I don't know what meds I'm on, but uh, either I'm crazy or this lady is crazy. And Ray kind of has the same feeling about it. No spoilers. Everything I'm going to tell you here is in the first couple of chapters, so you're not going to, I'm not going to get into the, the nitty gritty of everything. But, you know, Ray gets up, she walks away, she's still thinking about what this lady has said, and she opens a door, and yeah. She ends up in the story. First thing Ray figures out is Ray's not the hero of the story. Ray walks into the story and she is the villain. Not only is she the villain, but she's uh, the villain at a particular point in time where things are not going so well for the villain because, of course, this is a fantasy tale and we know good triumphs over evil, yada, yada, yada. So Ray's got to make some changes and make some changes quick or she's never going to get a chance to fulfill this quest. Second thing Ray realizes is that she really should have been paying more attention when her sister was reading to the story. Ray has a big habit, as do all of us when we listen to audiobooks. And like I said, Ray's sister was reading this book to her out loud, so it's basically an audiobook for her. We pay attention to the juicy bits. Uh, we pay attention to the exciting bits. And so Ray doesn't know a lot of the backstory of what happened. Uh, that was boring background stuff. And uh, yeah, she the more she knows, the, the better off she's going to be. Which brings us to part three that Ray quickly realizes is when you make decisions in a story that the original characters would not have made, you change the story. So even the parts that Ray does know, uh, some of these are not happening the way that they would have if Ray had not walked into the book. I'm not going to get any farther into this, uh, but imagine yourself in this situation. You've got this sickly body. You've been, you know, you've got no hope. You haven't really been able to rage against the machine as it was uh, because your sister is there by your side and you're, you're wanting to be strong as possible for her. Siblings are still siblings, we get that. Uh, and now you get a chance to be the villain. Anything you do, basically, uh, they're going to expect it from you. So she gets to lean in hard. She assembles her little group of vipers around her uh, based on what she remembers from the story, all the other villains from the story. And she's going to do what she needs to do to get this quest done. Because, after all, if anything happens to these people, they're just characters in a book. Which brings us to the point where Ray actually starts to feel for some of these characters. 
And, you know, what, how, what, how's that going to affect her decisions? And when is she going to put maybe some of them in front of her own needs and desires? And yeah, Sarah Reese Brennan did an absolute bang up job of this story. Uh, if you want more details, like I said, check out the interview that we did. I think we covered a lot of the stuff that you might be interested in. But curveballs are plenty, and it's not any of those that are just curveballs to be curveballs. It's, uh, like I said, what happens when you make a change to the story and everything doesn't go the way you planned. <laughs> so, absolutely, I'm giving this one five stars. You know, basically on the strength of the fact that I thoroughly, I know I use that phrase all the time, but I thoroughly enjoyed this book, kept me guessing on a lot of stuff, and even the parts that I wasn't guessing on, I spent a lot of time cringing going, oh no, I know exactly where this is going to take it. Uh, I find myself telling Ray to shut up a lot. <laughs> She's a 20-year-old young woman who is thrust into a fantasy storyline you don't always make the best decisions, uh, especially when you're in a situation where you don't think a lot of those decisions are actually going to have any real bearing on what's going to happen. Because again, this is this is a story that she's in. You know, these are just these people are all just ink on a page to her when she starts. And like most of us, uh, as we get engaged into a book, the characters start to mean something. That's all I'm going to say. If I don't shut up now, I'm going to spoil something. All right. Check out the book. I can tell you right now, uh, between the time that I interviewed Sarah Reese Brennan and the time that I finally get around to making this review, Long Live Evil has hit number one on the bestseller charts in the UK. So it's not just me telling you to read this. There are a lot of people loving this book. Absolutely check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Take care.